Hello, this is Jane Coombs of Working Well Solutions. Today I'm going to be talking about using the Bradford Factor, or sometimes called Index, to manage absence in an organisation. This training is aimed at occupational health, at technicians, practice nurses, doctors, who deal with the absence within a company and trying to find out why people are going off. Now this is quite a long and involved video so you may want to stop at some stage and go back and look at some of the slides again. Um, on slide 7 there's an exercise that's available for your audience to do so you may want to stop it at that stage um, and have them bring out their pens and papers. Let's go. Okay, so why do companies measure absence? And I think the main reason is to estimate the cost of absence to the organisation. Um, understand the causes of absence. And there's a number of reasons there. Um, one of the reasons is that unless you know what it is, then you can't monitor it, you can't actually improve absence. And it could be it's the culture of your organisation for fee people to go off sick at any stage. The most common way of measuring absence between companies is a standard format of total absence um, hours or days given a, during a given period against the total contracted hours or days in that period. Multiply that by 100 to give a percentage. Um, in that way, using that very simple metric, you have an easy comparable figure that you can compare across departments across geographical sections, timelines, um, and between companies, of course. This gives you the proportion of time that staff are absent, but it doesn't distinguish between the short-term absences, which by their very nature are much more difficult to manage, or to the number of absences that are due to long-term issues. You can have somebody off for an actual year um, and that will skew the figures. So you've got this percentage, which is a very rough and ready rule of how to look at absence rate in different companies. But to fully understand the nature of absence, you need to examine the frequency and the duration of absences. What a lot of companies use is something called the Bradford Factors, the Bradford Index, the Bradford Management Tool, um, and it's a very simple formula of spells of absence, that's what S stands for, times spells of absence multiplied by the days of absence. So what you've got there is a, a squaring of the spell of short-term absences, which gives a higher figure than a long-term absence. Um, and to illustrate this quite a difficult concept is some examples there for you. So one absence of five days, uh, you can see the answer there. That gives you a Bradford factor of five. And these other examples, you can see they don't go up in small amounts, but because there's a square within that formula, you get the weighting that you need, and weighting is W-E-I-G-H-T, the weighting that you need to show the importance of short-term repeated absence um, and how that affects you more. And most companies use um, a trigger for disciplinary action at when somebody reaches 25 points or over and that's in a six month rolling period. Um, so if you look at those five examples um, you will see that three of those people are definitely due for a chat with their manager. Um, example number two is getting up to the point and example number one is okay in terms of the Bradford factor. But there's other things that um, affect this calculation and to make it more accurate you have to consider how many days a person works a week. Um, if you take for example a person working five days a week and they take one absence um, then it's one times one times five because it's five days a week and that gives him five points. But person B works for a four day week, he takes a week off 
and he multiplies it by 4. So they've both taken a week off, but person A has got 5 points and person B, B has got 4 points because he works less days. So you have to put a correctional factor in to make it consistent across everybody in whatever shifts they're working. And here you have the the correctional factor um, and here you see how many days a person will work and the sum you have to put in that original formula to make it consistent and comparable across part-time workers. So let's apply the correctional factor to those two examples I've given you and you may want to go back and have a look at that but it's one day times one day times five days is five points and then the person who worked a four day week it's one times one times four and you and you do five divided by four and they both come to five points so they've both taken a week off but the person B because he works four days a week um, has come up to the same number of Bradford points now what most companies do they won't expect HR or managers to calculate this on every person but there'll be software or a spreadsheet with formula in which will you put those spells in and the calculations made and it automatically gives you the Bradford factor at the end of it. So this is the exercise I was telling you about so you may want to just stop the video now and just have a attempt at working out what the answer will be. And here are the exercise answers, I'm sure you've got this right. Um, so there we are. The interesting thing is if you look at number four and number six, they've both had a week off, but because four is a five day worker, and a three day worker, the points are the same, but number six has actually had three days off absence, that one's five, but their points are the same, and that's the correctional factor coming into play because of the part time worker. I hope you got those right. There's some absences you wouldn't include in your Bradford calculations. So your company has probably come up with some lists of absences which they call planned um, and do not include in the Bradford calculation and unplanned. And these are always included in the figures. So obviously all sickness absence and these other issues. And occasionally there'll be some investigation because somebody's been off um, whether to go into this category planned or unplanned, but it will be consistent and has to be consistent across the company to ensure that everybody's um, having the same rules applied. So you've worked out the Bradford index in your company, um, you've sent them um, to Occupational Health if you believe that there is a health element associated with the absences. And most people smile when I say this, but quite a lot of absence is not really about being sick or ill. A lot of absence can be about domestic issues, can be about childcare, can be about workplace issues where people don't feel motivated to come in. I'm sure you've all heard of duvet days. Um, but if there are health issues, then that needs to be investigated by occupational health. Um, so the return to work inter interview, so when somebody comes back to work, no matter what they've been off with, then they should be seen by their immediate supervisor or manager and have a chat about it. And the reason for that is set out here, um, but it's been said to be the most effective means of controlling absence in the workplace. So that's it about the Bradford Index, a short run through there. I hope you enjoyed it. If you would like my presentation with the notes, do drop me a line at jane.coombs at workingwellsolutions.com uh, or go to my website for more information. Thank you.